down the life so many. Yeah, uh, I've ever been in a relationship. Uh, I think once I I got a paper and I wrote things that I'm going to gain by by leaving this guy. I'm telling you, the things that I'm, I was going to lose after leaving this guy was longer than the things I was going to gain. which God has given us another chance to be alive. Uh, it's another episode we are going to have, episode 3 of I Testify, and I'm going to be your host, Masi Kadomi. Welcome back to episode 3. I hope all of us are going to learn. It's going to be amazing. I'm Shiro, and I'll be your co-host. Today. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Masi Kimoni. Uh, currently, I'm a fourth year student at Fuan University. I do take a degree course in agriculture and I thank God for taking me through the journey. I have a very interesting question to you. Who is Masi? First of all, I come from a, I'm the fifth born in the family mm -hmm. and I come from two counties, I always say two counties because I was born in Machakos County and we stay at Nairobi County with my family and I feel like I'm ready to share my story and I'm hoping to transform the lives of men. Okay, Masi, let me ask you, have you ever dated or have you ever been in a relationship before? Yeah, uh, I've ever been in a relationship once and uh, it lasted for one and I think uh, five months mm -hmm. and how it started uh, <laughs> I think I was a very innocent girl I had I told myself I would date for some time during my campus time because I could see many people were heartbroken and I was so afraid so I started dating when I was a uh, dad, yeah. Okay, so Masi, uh, have you in mind that you've ever been in a relationship? And as we know, we just can't wake up if any other day and say I want to be in a relationship, right? So the things that you must have considered when you're starting that relationship. As I had said, I was very careful uh, for entering into that relationship. And at first, the, the, the person that I started dating, I had known him for a long time, he was a family friend and I could see the way my sisters were, were, were relating with him and the way he was responding to certain issues and uh, the way he was helping people and uh, I think those are some of the things that I found myself um, wanting to, to know him more and more. Um, first, he was a born again Christian, and uh, I, in my life, I've always loved people who are clear with what they want. So he could come and insist that he wants to see my parents and my family. Like he wanted everyone each time when everyone is there. And I think those are some of the things that made me. I really fall in love with the guy. Okay, so basically you fell in love with how the guy was doing his things. Not even, you know, people normally say you have preference, dark, you know, tall, dark and handsome and stuff. So you, you fell in love with the guy's characteristics, how he carried himself. Sure. Right, so could you please tell us now, you now said yes to this guy. So what are the things that you could do together, you know? Uh, yeah, um, 
uh, that was I think my first relationship. So I know uh, people who are in a relationship are um, mostly the Christians. I thought they read Bible together and uh, go for road trips and me as a girl receive a lot of flowers <laughs> and uh, being taken out and surprises. I, that was in my mind before I entered into that relationship. But as time was going on, I think that was part of me maturing. I <clears throat> started realizing that it was more than that. Like he had his, his activities and I also had my activities more so. Me being a student, I was supposed to be in school and him was supposed to attend to, to some activities. Yes. So how did you accommodate the guy? Like you, you were a student and the guy had to do his own activities. How did you balance that? Having in mind that when you baby girl, you have a lot of expectation now that you know this girl loves you. So how did you manage to accommodate maybe the flaws that the guy had before everything went bad? This funny thing about me, when I was, uh, uh, I think, 18, I was saying jokingly that I'll marry a guy who is more than 40, and that time I was, I was 18. <laughs> so, like, him being busy, I was happy about it. Like, I was happy about how he carried himself, and I had no issue when I called him and he could tell me I'm in a meeting and we'll talk later. I was just okay with the good morning and a good night. Yes. So basically you are okay. We were taking Lema Bola Mukula Nini. So you are okay with everything that the guy was providing. Uh, yeah, like time and the respect. I was okay with that. Okay, okay. let me ask you Masi, you said that uh, this guy, maybe the time you're dating him, he was occupied with many things, like he was working, you mean so? Yeah. And you were a student in your institution at that time. Yeah. So, when were you meeting up? Uh, see, there was this period, Corona period. Uh -huh. I think that time we had a, a lot of time together because um, most of the, of the students, I mean university students were in their holidays. So, I think the, most of the time from March to I think November, mm -hmm. we had all the time. Yeah. He had the time together. Yeah. Okay, Miss And uh, before he came to to break you, you did see the signs of a heartbreak coming. Yeah, like I, I, I took me like uh, three, three months. Me not believing, but I could see all the signs, like the silent treatment and also the withdrawal symptoms, and I could sense something wrong. Yeah. But Marcy, you said you were okay with good morning and good night. So how comes the silence and the withdrawal stuff start to become a red flag? Like uh, when you ask, uh, when we, we arrange to meet and the person says that we will make it to that date and it's me who has asked the day still there <laughs> and just confirms no, it will be there and it happens for I think more than three weekends so that's when i started realizing something was wrong okay so as much as those disappointments was were very small and you still wanted that relationship to run so how did you deal with the disappointments of not turning up yeah at first i panicked i'm telling you i started sweating i you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made me believe that I was the baby girl, like I was the love of his life and uh, he can't leave me. So like every time he could tell me like he loves me and there was no chance of him leaving me. So when I saw that he can stay for a day without asking me how I am and <laughs> where am I, what am I doing there, I started panicking. And I'm telling you, I, I can't explain the first time what I felt, but I felt like I was going mad. And I also cried. I called him and 
the way he responded to the question I asked him, I could get a clear response. Like from the way I interpreted it, I could tell that something was wrong. You have in your mind that something is wrong with the relationship. What was it? Uh, what caused these things like him maybe to start withdrawing I, I, some of the things that he started suggesting that we should do and I could feel it was wrong and me giving a clear answer that it's a no for me I think for him he saw it as uh, I don't love him and instead of parents talking about it now we started the silent treatment and with time now the world had become bigger and the issues we couldn't sort them anymore. Okay, let's see. Uh, you know, when we have party breaks, it's either one of the party cheated on another. Like the guy he might have cheated on you or rather you cheated on him. What happened in your case? Oh uh, I uh, from the beginning I had a clear start. I knew what I wanted and I knew my son as a Christian and uh, most of the time we, we look at how that relationship, what people are doing, like to some people like, that's not an issue. But to me I could see it was an issue and for the first time I sensed um, some of the things that me as a Christian I can't do or I can't tolerate, that's where I missed that something is wrong and I really can't continue in this relationship. Okay, so you basically ended the relationship yourself, not the guy? Uh, I, I, I sat down, I was advised by a friend first to sit down and analyze everything. I. I got a paper and I wrote things that I'm going to gain by by leaving this guy and things that I'm going to lose by leaving this guy and the benefits that I'm going to have after leaving that guy. Now I'm telling the things that I'm, I was going to lose after leaving this guy was longer than the things I was going to gain. So, <laughs> but. I thank God that it made me realize that the point that things that I was going to gain, they were stronger than these things that I was losing. And I think that's where that's when I analyzed everything is and I came up with that decision. So from the point that you decided to facing the guy, what was the feeling hypocritical to be from face to hey, you know what? It's over between us. The courage and everything that you went through before, you know, coming in terms to telling that guy it's nowhere between us. Yeah, like it's something that I planned, I gathered some strength to do it, I, but I didn't, I didn't get any energy to do it. I had planned to meet him, but uh, because of time, I couldn't meet him. So I, I came. I came back to school, that was November, and I, I decided that I'm going to call him, but when I called him, he didn't respond. So I wrote a message and sent it to him, telling him that I can't continue in that relationship anymore, and I gave him the reason as to why I won't continue. Wow, that's amazing. Let's take a commercial break and then we'll be back with more. Okay, see you very much. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, you can remote remote. Okay, you must see Umetong. We are, you know, we have been dating this guy. We've been having sweet moments with him. We have been spending time with him, and he reaches a point of a drift part. What separated you guys? Um, <clears throat> we reached a time. Uh, uh, we started having differences, and I suggested that we talk. And I thank God we were very much mature, and 
the way we handled our issues it was very perfect and I would always appreciate that. But we could talk and after some months again repeat exactly what made us the other time have some issues and uh, it happened for some time repeatedly and that was the main cause of us breaking up. <laughs> So you're telling us the uh, cause of the you separating or drifting apart is the difference. Yeah. You know, they are repeating themselves uh, time and time again. Yeah. In your relationship, there must be some no into the lab. Maybe there are treatments, these are some sweet women. Do you sometimes miss the treatments? I'm a little bit too street to do she can have it. Or only street fun. Yeah, street nazo nili rudi like we talk with a baby girl and uh, good morning na the next morning uh tunamka tukama mbuzi tu unaingia tu mta eh for sure I felt that but that wasn't my main concern I was focusing on my healing like the day that we broke up I I stayed for two days without believing that um single so i had accepted the the reality but i think after two to three days there i realized i had to wake up and focus on my healing yes. okay so far on a focus on your healing what are the things that she you consider during your healing process or how did you come you know how did you overcome that process of like the reality hitting you that I ended this and this is what I want but again in a heart so how did you deal with your pain and everything how did you get over did you have some friends anything you have when you learn to work you know me to be careful yeah um, first uh, guilty was killing me because I thought maybe it's me who is an overthinker maybe even this one would have sorted Maybe I did it so hardy, maybe we didn't mean to talk things out. I was also regretting ending the relationship. I felt like begging the guy of which I did and <laughs> you <mean you laughs> told the guy. Yes, I told to get you back. Yes, like we can 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 we talk like forgive me, I'm regretting everything <laughs> that I did. <laughs> okay, after how long have you started begging? Like after one day, I think one day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't survive, I was dying. So, <laughs> and somehow, I thank God, it's like he hadn't his heart. I'm sure, see, me and I would do it come to Missouri, so till I can get the skis, I mean, baby girls, and so I can quit the truck and pick, and I get pulled, and pulled, and pulled. <laughs> but this okay. time he wasn't answering my calls. I was texting him and I'm going to go so you didn't you didn't happen Yes. So the reality now you can hear that Masi you are on your own like right now and I could feel the the this person when you end up working with God and I love listening to music. I had downloaded some music and on this time, not no for heartbreaks, I, <laughs> no, it's songs that maybe I'm closer to God. Like I remember this, this song uh, by Worship Mob called It's Your Heart That I'm Going to Rely On. Like, and I could sing that song crying, it's your I'll be I'm going to hold on to you Lord and I could feel like it was more than the heart the 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 the, the, the heartbeat of Jesus. Like I could feel he was breathing close to me because I was seeing it's your heartbeat. You can hear the heart between you are close to someone. So I could feel the breath and also the heartbeat and I could say my my heartbeat is not that strong. I don't know whether I'll be breathing the next minute. But one thing I'm sure Lord is that your happy is always alive and I'm going to depend on that happy that bit and I think that's what kept to me. Oh Mercy, you're such an amazing because here you come, you have been heartbroken, then you uh you draw yourself closer to the Lord. 
you are drawing yourself closer to the God. You're listening to the gospel songs, all that. Because when when a person is being when a person is not broken, six you know a, a week for some to pay. Let us say come on, let's even go for a year. But for you see, as you break is there, we love the gospel. When you try to break it, you have to see Anna, do me, me, or go on any penda, which kind of. But you see, your case is so different. You have been heartbroken. But this one doesn't mean, it doesn't, it didn't let you go far from God. It just draws you closer to the Lord. It's such an amazing song. Okay, so tell us, um, how long did it take you? The healing process, how long did it take? Yeah, uh, uh, after after you gave them the response, like I the, I told you, I wrote a message and I expected him to give me a response. Yeah. And I think after 24 hours, he replied that he has agreed us to part. Yeah. So like now I was sure now he's been with real and with no room of us coming back together. So uh, for two days. I, I felt like I was going to die. I was very weak. <laughs> I was very weak. Like, oh, I didn't sleep for th- that night. I didn't sleep. I, I didn't take anything. So the following day, I was very weak. And I remember crying and telling God that I just want peace and rest. I was listening to some preachings about rest and I was telling God that this rest I've been hearing from people saying that rest and I've been telling your people who give rest now I want to return this rest and that didn't happen because I was telling God like I want it right now, I want it right now and I couldn't feel anything like I felt like God was not happy about me ending the relationship because as far as I could see it's God who may meet me with this guy and it was his plan and so it means who did wrong so I could feel maybe he wants me to go back to the guy and we talk about our issues so uh, that, 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 that day I woke up and that was after 24 hours. He gave me his response after 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So the following day now, it was now reality. And I I remember after now praying, crying, there was nothing that was happening. I decided that I'm just going to stay at the house and just stay. I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to do anything. Now when I say that, I received a message and so it was from one of our brothers at that time. He was my family dad. And I received a message and he was asking me, uh, can we meet? So he asked me, and where can we meet? Like the first message was that, yeah, hello daughter, where are we going to meet? Like, and I, 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 I asked him, where are you? He told me, I'm coming to school and where can I find you? So I changed and I told him, just come to my house. And that time I, I, had, I had removed my hair, I was looking terrible. <laughs> I was looking terrible. So he just came and he started reading Bible verses. I, I wasn't listening. Like I was like, that's what I've been reading. That's what I've been telling God. Now I can't see anything new you are telling me. Mm-hmm. But, uh, he, I, he continued talking and I was just seated there and there was a time he read a verse in the book of John and it was John chapter 1 verse 14. It says, and the word became flesh and dealt among us full of grace. So and that grace is sufficient. And that time when he had when I had and the word became flesh, that was Jesus. And I I interpreted it that time that now that the flesh also, like he, he dwells inside of us. I'm carrying him inside of me and I can feed myself for him to be magnified. If it's inside of me, like I'm carrying Jesus. 
So the only way that I can do to overcome these things is me feeding, feeding the word of God. Like I, I realized after almost five minutes that I had this, I had the rest that I was praying for and the whole room I could feel God was there and I could feel happiness, joy, rest, like I could witness, I could feel it that the God was there and visited me already. So I ran to my neighbor and told him, I uh, I want you to know that God lives and he's in my room, he has visited me and he's there. And I came back to my room and I, 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 I was never the same again. I received my miracle like immediately. And God right there, I break the, the gift and everything I could feel empowered. From that time, I didn't want the guy again. I didn't want him to text me. I didn't want him to tell me anything. I knew that was my turning point. Uh, so basically for you, what healed you was the presence of God and everything. You know, you going back to God and it only took you one day. And so now it's a point to note. If you have to recure a child of a mother, and then it wasn't easy. Are we getting something from Matthew that God can even give us you know, that grace to go back to Him? No matter how bad the things that you've been doing in that relationship, but they kill a bit of God. Back to you, Mercy. So after now you've healed, and you know, you've healed, and everything God has come through. What are some of the positive things that you learned from the heartbreak? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I, I could feel like I was mature enough to handle conversations and uh, I could feel that it's not wrong for you to, uh, to confront someone when you feel like you are not agreeing with what they are doing and I could feel like I gained some, some confidence and I could feel I knew who I was from that time and yes, I feel like I grew up a lot. Okay, so you got the sense of who Mashi is. Yeah, you got to know that I'm this mature girl and I can handle, you know, conversations like someone is mature and by that time you knew what was right for you. That's why you confronted the guy and ended the relationship. Oh, so what can you tell people there? Maybe who are in a relationship and you know things are so pressed, they, but they can't speak out. What can you tell them? I came up with a list of the things I was going to lose and the things I, that was what I was thinking. The things I thought I would lose and the things I thought I would gain and you compare. So that's what I would tell them. Their peace comes first. Mm -hmm. God will learn you. He's great. He's great. Okay, Masi. Uh, I'd like us to ask you the same question. Uh, my fellow adults, still. You know, new people here, you have teenagers. People are dating us here. People are in relationships. We get people with my heart breaks. Uh, like right now, you mm. know what is right, and uh, if you are in a relationship, you put yourself there. Uh, people are saying nowadays that everyone is toxic, and it's true, but it depends with how you are learning your toxicity to affect the others. Mm. Like, we are all toxic, but be careful with how you treat the other person, just deal with your issues faithfully. And, be committed to the relationship and also depend on God. Like the first thing is to gain everything from God. God can tell you what to do or not to do. He can direct you on what to tell the guy and he can do anything in that relationship. Yeah, okay, Masu, you can tell us for how long we have been in the streets. Everything happened in November uh, 27. <laughs> yes. So from November 27 up to now, it's almost uh, uh, next month is November. I think that will almost be a um, year. And I thank God I'm happy about home. I am I'm okay with my status and I'm enjoying myself. After a heartbreak, yeah. what you're supposed to do? What you're supposed not to do after you've been heartbroken? 
Yeah, uh, I know it's very tempting to post some things that are attacking the other person. It's very tempting. At that time, you want to communicate. You really want to pass a message and tell the other person what you did to me was wrong, and you really got a lot of questions. And sometimes you find a lot of memes. Uh, like if I like you, you can relate to these memes and you want the other person to see. And because it's very hard to avoid such things, it's good to avoid being online and. You can tell the person or you do it, concentrate with your peace. You can tell the person I'm going to delete your number and this is the reason I really don't want to give your status. I start missing you again. I don't want, I, I might say something that might attack you and that's the reason why I'm going to delete your number for a while. When I heal, I'll come back and we should always focus on our healing. I'm not doing this to hurt you all for revenge, I'm doing this for my healing. Mm. Yes. My peace comes first. Mm -hmm. It's very important to have peace of mind. You are being heartbroken. Stop spending a lot of time online. Pick up block. You can, but you can tell him the reason why you are blocking me. It's like, it's you, it's for my peace. I don't want to see you, I'll miss you, I'll text you again. I, I don't want that. Because I don't have enough strength, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to block you for a while, and when I heal, I will unblock you. Then, you do it. Oh. Make you the kind of delete the number. <laughs> <laughs> All hard for ourselves. Still, as well, it's not a must that you get cheated on. At times, just look at yourself. What do you deserve? Or maybe you deserve better than those noise or my treats, maybe boy treats, maybe girl treats. No. At times, you just have to consider your peace of mind. Yeah, usingoje uwamiwe na uyo mtu that it's over when you could see that mimi hapa naona red flag because the respect that I ought to have as a person, I'm not being given. And again, mwasi ya mwesema, at times, unakua tempted to go back to the person. But again, you have to ask yourself, does God really want this to happen? You know, let us base everything on what does God want me to do? Having in mind that we are Christians, and we're not just Christians by the name, but let us also be Christians with our relationships, how we relate to our friends, and how we relate to everyone. So, before picking up everything and wanting to go back to relationship, Jay, is it God that she really needs to give? And maybe you're going through this time, you've been heartbroken, or just everything is not good in your relationship, and you really fear, what am I going to do? Remember, it's only the person who created that phone who can correct it. So if God created you, he's your maker and he's only the person who can complete you. So when things or when tables are turned in your relationship and you don't see it going anywhere, don't fear it to end because it's better a broken relationship than a broken marriage. So choose yourself and just know that in everything, it's only God who can complete you with only God who can give you peace. Thanks and that was for today. Make sure you leave a comment, subscribe and share. I've been your co-host Chero. I've been your host Musika Dominic.